Hi everyone, Dr. Mark here. Today we're going to talk about language processing. Now language is the ability to communicate through signs and symbols. So we know that you can speak, you know that you can demonstrate through gestures, and you know that you can understand that language through visual or auditory signals. So what that means is you can basically break language up into the sensory components, that's being able to see it and hear it, and the motor components, which is being able to speak it and gesture that language as well. This video is just gonna focus on the sensory aspects, so being able to understand what we see and what we hear as language. Next video will be the motor aspects. So before we begin, you need to realize that when we look at language, you'll find that language is predominantly lateralized. What that means is it's situated for most people predominantly in the left hemisphere compared to the right hemisphere. So in actual fact, if you're right-handed, around about 90 to nearly 100% of those who are right-handed, language is located in the left hemisphere. If you're left-handed, about a 70% chance that language will be predominantly located in the left hemisphere as well. So when I do all my drawings today, I'm just gonna draw up the left hemisphere and focus on that. Now, another thing is that I'm gonna draw up a brain. There we go. Now, this is the anterior, this is the posterior aspect of the brain. This is the temporal lobe. This is the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. All right, so we need to know these lobes before we can move forward. So if you don't, go through some of my older videos. Now I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna write this up. Okay, firstly, can you see that? Good. Can you read that? Good. Can you understand that? Good, hopefully. Does that bring some sort of image or experience to mind? Hopefully it does. What if I were to read it to you? Roses are red. Could you understand what I said? And again, does it bring some sort of thought to mind? Maybe some flowers and a color? So this is what we're gonna to explain today. Go through the processing of being able to read those words and also being able to hear those words. So let's start with the reading, the visual aspect of processing language. So you are going to look at these words and what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through the visual pathways and go, as you know, to the occipital lobe, which is focused on vision. So first thing is, when you first read roses are red, you're gonna get some very raw, basic information coming to your occipital lobe, going to the primary visual cortex, which is located around about here, which we know is Brodmann's area 17. You may be sitting there going, what's Brodmann's area? If you were to Google Brodmann's area, you'll come up with a map of the brain with a whole bunch of numbers all over it. What that means is, well, Brodmann's map was originally created as a cytological experiment so that the brain could be classified in regards to its lumps and bumps and undulations and the way it looks cytologically, so it's cellular and histologically the tissue, okay? And so these numbers are associated with these different areas. What we've now done is we've associated certain functions to these numbers. So Brodmann's area 17 is associated with the primary visual cortex. Primary visual cortex. Okay, primary visual cortex, what that does is you see roses are red, you see it. And all it does when this information comes to 17 is make sure that you recognize that you've seen those words. You don't know what those words mean, you've just seen something. That's all the primary visual cortex does, you've just seen it. You now need to sort of start to analyze it. So what that means is all the primary visual cortex is associated with is receiving information, receiving visual information. But now we need to start analyzing it, okay? So the information coming to 17 needs to throw it to another level of processing, which is Brodmann's area 18. Now Brodmann's area 18 is associated with analyzing that information. So what that means is now you're starting to look at the lines and you're starting to see the shape of the lines, the length of the lines, the space between the lines, and you are analyzing all that data. That's that next step at Brodmann's 18 in the occipital lobe. 
It then throws that information to the next level of processing, which is Brodmann's Area 19. And Brodmann's Area 19 is associated with recognition, recognizing what's being written. So again, for example, primary visual cortex is associated with just seeing that something's there. Then you start to analyze the lines, the length of the lines, the color, the spaces and so forth. Then it throws all that information that's received to the Brodmann's Area 19, which then starts to associate it with anything you've seen before. Have you seen these words before? Do they make sense to you? And this is where you recognize, oh, that says roses, that says R, that says red but they still don't have any meaning for you. Those words still don't make sense. All you know is you've recognized them before, okay? Recognition. So in order for you to understand what that means, especially within your own experience. So for one person, roses may bring up one experience. For another, red may bring up another experience, okay? It needs to throw it to another part of the brain associated with understanding these words and understanding language. This Part of the brain is called Wernicke's area and you'll find Wernicke's area around about here I'll just put a W for Wernicke's area and what Wernicke's area so it's located so firstly this is the temporal lobe okay and you've got this uh, long, uh, this fissure right here this sulcus and because it's the temporal lobe you can have many different sulci you have one there, one there, and you're gonna have a gyrus here, so it's a bump up, then a dip down, then a bump up, then a dip down, and a bump up. So that means you have the superior temporal gyrus, you have the middle temporal gyrus, and you have the inferior temporal gyrus. You can see that when Nikki's area, let's write when Nikki's down, that when Nikki's area, is located in the superior temporal gyrus at the posterior portion. So posterior superior temporal gyrus is where Wernicke's area is predominantly located. And what it does is it plays a role in understanding what you've just seen, which means, like I said, 17 will send a signal to 18, 18 will send a signal to 19 and you have these varying levels of processing and in order for you to recognize and understand it needs to go to Wernicke's and now roses are red is able to uh, produce some sort of understanding of that word so if somebody had damage to Wernicke's area it's called Wernicke's aphasia all right and when Nicky's aphasia means you have a problem with understanding words. These areas aren't damaged. You can still see something. You can still have a look at the lines and the spacing and the textures and so forth. You still even know that that may say roses and that may say R and that may say red, but it doesn't mean anything to you. You can't understand it. All right? It's basically useless information to just a bunch of lines. Okay? All right. That is processing, oh, now you may think if that's called the primary visual cortex, what are these other two called? Well, they're either called the secondary and tertiary visual cortex, or you could call them the association visual cortex. So let's write that down, association visual cortex, or the visual association cortex. The visual association cortex. All right, now let's have a look at when we hear me saying roses are red. Roses are red is going to come through your auditory system. It's going to move via your cochlear nerve, your vestibular cochlear nerve. It's going to go and send a signal ultimately to your temporal lobes. So that's going to be this lobe here, near where Wernicke's area is located. Now, what you're going to find is that there's going to be areas here, here, and here, okay? So predominantly located in the superior temporal gyrus, okay, the superior temporal gyrus. Now these areas are areas 41, 42, and 22, okay? Now there's some overlap here, but predominantly 41, 42, and 22.
Now, this is your auditory cortex, and you're gonna have your primary auditory cortex, your secondary auditory cortex, and your tertiary auditory cortex, just like here. Or you could say your primary auditory cortex and your association auditory cortex, or your auditory association cortex, so these other two. And they do a similar processing job as the primary visual cortex. When I say roses are red, you're simply hearing something in the primary auditory cortex. Then you start to analyze it, and then you start to recognize it. But again, in order for it to mean anything to you and understand what it means, you need to send that signal again to Wernicke's area. So, very quickly and again, we've got if you want to read words, reading words need to go to the primary visual cortex, 17 Brodman's area, project it to 18 and 19, which are the association cortices. And what they do is that they analyze the information. You can recognize it, I know what that is, and then it means something to you in Wernicke's area. Same with the auditory cortex, you'll hear somebody say some words, you simply hear something, then you analyze it, then you recognize it, and again, for those words to mean anything, you then send that signal to Wernicke's area. All of this is sensory processing and the sensory processing of language. This is a very simplistic overview of it. What we're gonna go through in the next video is how do we then produce language? How do we produce speech specifically? So that's going to involve Broca's area and it's going to involve the motor cortex in the frontal lobe.